Hey everybody, uh, I am experimenting for the first time using a multi-stream service called Restream, and I'm wondering if you guys would help me out. I would like to see your comments. Uh, I would like to see to hang out with you. And if you guys have any questions or you need to ask anything, please jump in there and uh, let me see how this thing works. That would be great. Okay. So far, we've got no viewers, but we're going to figure it out. Let's see where we're at here. I'll need to answer your question. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anybody out there? Yeah, we got nine viewers. Uh, guys, so thanks for checking it out. Here's what I'm doing right now. Uh, my name's Mark, uh, in case you don't know. I'm just experimenting with this new Restream app. Hey, Paul. Okay. Um, hopefully, Paul, you can see that I'm posting there. And uh, that makes me happy. Paul, uh, if you have any volleyball questions, happy to answer them right now. But right now, this is just the first like experimental type situation. I'm going to be live. I'm going to do right now and ask me anything scenario. And uh, if you guys have some volleyball questions that you want to ask, I'm happy to answer them. And I'm just trying to figure out how this all works. Hi, Silva Studios. Good to see you. Um, Really, what I'm trying to do is, over time, just be able to interact with you guys a little bit more, answer some questions. What up, Melvin from Hawaii? Hey, Donovan, how you guys doing? I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. I'm guessing you guys are tuning in through the YouTube live, which is pretty cool. So, um, yeah, let's get going. It seems like it's working. I appreciate you guys' texts and your messages. So go ahead and use the comments. And if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask me anything. First one is, uh, when did I start playing volleyball? Um, I started playing volleyball, I guess, when I was 16. I was going to St. Francis Preparatory High School in Queens, New York, and I stopped playing baseball to start playing volleyball. played one year my junior year of high school. Then I went back to baseball, went to college for football, and then after that, uh, I started finding indoor again while I was in college. And I guess when I was 19, I said, I'm going full time for volleyball. And I really never looked back. So I transferred from University of Delaware to George Mason University. And uh, the rest is history. So kind of got a soft start when I was 16. And I really started taking it seriously when I was 19. But thanks, Thomas. Ask that question. So studios, um, I'm in Hermosa Beach every week. So uh, I will be there this week jamie jason ideal distance from the setter after passing before you hit if you're on the left side i'm going to give you a quick and easy answer if you have a good pass in the front half of the court get yourself 10 feet of width from your setter when you're taking your approach how far do you want to be from a net sorry that's as a left side as a right side do you want to be in an arm's length of your setter so width wise if you could touch your setter with your fingers as a right side that's a good spot for you if you pass the front half of the court after that how far from the net should you be we're going to make a youtube video on this coming up but if you go to the net you wave your hand so you go an arm's distance from the net you turn around and you take a full speed backwards approach that will tell you how far you should be from the net okay so don't stand on top of the net but stand an arm's distance from the net turn around in place once you're there then you take that four-step approach. You go away from the net. And wherever you end up with a little bit of broad jump at the end of your approach, that is where you want to start your approach from. So your body can tell you, I don't need to tell you a distance. Ricardo, thanks for the question, man. Uh, is jump roping a good workout for volleyball? Absolutely. But you got to figure out different ways to do it because uh, jump rope keeps you agile. But it's soft jump, so it's soft impact, right? If you're doing double and triple jumps, I would say that that might be a better scenario for you to start volleyball training because then you're going to have more impact when you jump rope with the double jump. You have to jump higher and you have to stay quick on the ground. And that's what volleyball players need is that plyometric effect. So um, if you're jump roping, 
Yes, great for a warm up. Then you want to start building up to one legged stuff. Once you're done with that one legged stuff, then start trying to go double unders. And if you're so bold, some triple unders. Uh, but yeah, Ricardo, it's definitely good. Paul, can you go over hand setting? What happens to the wrists and elbows and what the common mistakes are? Paul, if, you, if you've seen our video on YouTube, it's called Seven Deadly Sins of Beach Volleyball, it, or Seven Deadly Sins of Hand Setting. Great video, it goes over all of that. But just as a review, if you make sure that you can fit, we call it cheeseburger position, right? Have your hands super wide. Make sure that you can see this ball. Look at the hand shape. It's like I'm grabbing a bucket of water, right? It can't be like this, my hands can't be together. Grab a bucket of water. Make sure you can look through this periscope, okay? So that you can see there's a ball like kind of able to sit in here, in the hands. Now, they should be pretty relaxed when the ball comes in, but when the ball comes into your hands, first, your hands flex like this. So you need your hands to come down, and you still need to be able to look through this little diamond cheeseburger area, okay? If you're not doing that, or if you're tilting back like this, that's not gonna be a good set for beach, okay? So look through it, tilt it back, and then once you release, the ball's there, now I go. Most people, a lot of people, when they're setting, they drop their elbows like this. So their elbows go down and then they go up. Really, it's a hand flex, wrist and hand flex, and then we set. I hope that helps, Paul. Just make sure you soften those wrists. Marv, YouTube Live, I'm here. I'm here, baby. I am Chantel watching from Facebook. Thank you, guys. So I'm trying this new Restream program, and I'm trying to see how it works. I hope it's super helpful. If you guys have any questions, volleyball questions, I'm happy to be here and share it with you um, and, uh, and hang out with you. Hopefully get to know you guys a little bit. Okay. Two or three most common reasons for double contact when hand setting. Paul, same thing. Check out that video uh, on YouTube. It's called Seven Deadly Sins of Hand Setting. And if you are really, really actually struggling with setting, I'm going to send you to the page that you should go to right now because we have a 30-day setter course specifically for beach volleyball hand setting. Okay. So I'm just going to include that in the link. It's called betteratbeach.com forward slash store. All right. If you haven't gone to it, it's our membership. You can be there. And one of the many courses included is going to be your hand setting course. So make sure you jump on that. You too. Um, but betterbeach.com forward slash store. You can check it out. Uh, our membership, our elite membership includes a ton of courses. We have hand setting, learn how to hand set in 30 days. It's going to give you videos. It's going to make you do drills each day. And you have to video them and you post them to our Facebook group so that we can coach you live. And then we go live with our members every week so that you can bring your video and we can watch it together and we can answer your questions. So that's what happens inside that elite membership. But um, I'm going to keep going through these questions and you guys, we're going to do a uh, AMA here. We'll ask me anything. All right. Chantel, thanks for joining. And... Thomas, why did I want to start a YouTube channel? I didn't know that I wanted to start a YouTube channel. Um, I just knew that there was a lot of information that I was learning at a high level that I had never heard before. No one ever talked about it. From the time I was 16 all the way until the time I was like 29 years old, there are conversations that high level players have that nobody else even talks about. And that's why I said like, man, I, I got to get this information out to people. And then that led to some YouTube videos. Uh, then we were running camps and clinics in California, and now we run them everywhere. And then finally, uh, it became like, you know what? If people are needing this information, if you really want to learn how to like get better at Beach Volleyball, well, then now we're going to create some online courses. So the YouTube channel kind of it started with me knowing that there was information that wasn't getting out to players and knowing that when I was 19 through like 30, I wanted to have that information and nobody was sharing it. So that's why we developed our YouTube channel. That's why we developed betteratbeach.com. And that's why we've created a, a monster selection of courses uh, that people can go into and it's all included in that membership. So starting a YouTube channel is not glorious, by the way. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. 
so hopefully you guys enjoy all of the free content we give and hopefully you dive a little bit deeper and you come hang out with us and you take some of our uh, our courses in the membership ray ray asked what the last movie that made me cry was i don't know um i kind of cried from laughter at uh the wrong missy that was pretty good last movie that made me cry armageddon kind of always gets me uh, i don't know all right uh, grossest thing I've seen at a tournament? I Not at a tournament, maybe, but at one of our camps that we were running in Spain uh, when I was with Bali Tours and Beach Camp. We had this guy, Marius, from Norway who loved partying. Uh, big party guy. And he would rage at night, and then we had the early morning training. So we were doing block training, lots of jumping, and he had drank all night. So he comes, and like in between block ramps, this is how passionate he was about the camp about the actual volleyball part that he was like really hung over and he came to the camp and in between reps you like get his block reps go up there and then he would step off when it wasn't his turn literally like yak and wretch and start <laughs> just going in the sand and then when it was time for his rep again he would like suck it up and come back onto the court and play so that was pretty gross but also really impressive <laughs> so that's the not the grossest thing I've seen in a tournament, but decent story anyway. Um, thanks, Chantel. I'm glad you're watching those videos. Nice. Uh, how is this different than the normal YouTube live stream? Tanya, right now I'm using a uh, restream. So it's actually streaming at the same time to three different to three different channels. It's going to the YouTube channel, it's going to the Facebook channel, and it's going to uh, our Twitch account. So it doesn't have Instagram. I would love to be able to do that, but what I can do is I could always set up the Instagram feed on my phone and then we can be going on all those platforms. And soon it'll be on LinkedIn. So uh, I'll be able to hang out with you guys, connect a lot more uh, with everybody who's checking out the YouTube channel and everybody who's in those groups. Proudest volleyball moment. Um, here's, here's what I'll say. Honestly, it came in college, my proudest volleyball moment. That's a great question. Proudest volleyball moment was when I kind of gave up everything. So I, I, I was pretty decent at baseball. I think some coaches expected me to go to college for baseball. I was able to go to college for football. I chose to go to a higher division one program and I actually uh, ditched on a scholarship to be able to compete at a higher level. Huge mistake probably, but uh, <laughs> then, uh, when I started playing volleyball, there was a push, there was a grind that I had to get the other players to like work out hard and train extra. And when I started on the university of Delaware team, we had two practices a week by the end of my freshman year and maybe beginning of my sophomore year, I'm not remembering, but by that time we had pushed it to four practices a week. You know, I worked with the gym and I said like, Hey, we, we need these extra hours. And the guys started getting sick of it because they're just like, this is not a D one program. It's a club program. So we can't practice that much. We don't want to practice that much. So then I kind of dropped everything. Um, I was in a fraternity. So I was doing that. I was a, a blue hand ambassador. I was a tour guide for the college and I was, um, yeah, I was involved in varsity sports and club sports. So I was having a great time at University of Delaware and I dropped it all to make sure that I could just compete at the D1 level. Transferred schools, went to George Mason University. He said, we can't take you on the team just yet. What I really like about you is that you talk a lot of smack, which lights a fire under the guy's asses. And you also work hard. You seem to be athletic, but you're completely raw. You have no ball control, anything. Uh, so it took me four months and then i think it was maybe in january but coach yeah no it had to be february coach fred chow at mason at the time he came and said you know mark sit down come to the office and he's like hey just want to tell you appreciate your hard work and i was like oh, here comes the bomb it's about to drop uh but instead he was like just want to let you know that we're going to keep you on through the spring season uh like the way you've progressed really want to see the hard work continue and that's the only way that you could stay on and like that was a big, big volleyball moment for me because I dropped everything. I transferred schools. I had a good setup at my old school. Went to like try to walk on, try out at a D1 program. And I remember for whatever reason, I had a, a roll of duct tape 
in my hands because I was fixing something in my dorm at some point. And I was like, you know, gonna like be like, thank you, sir. Thank you, Fred. Like, appreciate being on the team. I'm gonna do some good by. And I walked out, walked out of the building, and I just screamed and launched the duct tape that I had in my hands just because I was just uh, elated. So I threw, I was like, yeah. And I remember like, you know, when you scream so loud that you get like tingles and you get lightheaded, I was so fired up just to be welcomed on the team and just to earn my spot after kind of laying it all on the line. Uh, when a lot of people told me not to, that felt good to trust myself to go after what I wanted to go for and then to succeed. So that was probably one of the most memorable and, and proudest volleyball moments. So Raynars, uh, greetings from Latvia. Cool hanging out with you, man. Deadlift or squat, best thing to train vertical jump and explosion. Both. Why not both? Uh, you can definitely do squats and deadlifts. It's just going to depend on like what you're technically the best at. You want to make sure that your technique is on point first. But either way, don't overcomplicate it. Squats and deadlifts are both excellent. Okay? You got to make sure you're doing them right. You got to make sure you're technically proficient. But you have to do something. You got to do it consistently. Everybody keeps trying to like change the game of, of what we should do and, and new exercises. Squats and deadlifts have worked for a long time. Don't overcomplicate it. Keep going with both of them. Just make sure that you're repping in the right range. And if you are talking about deadlifting and squatting, we have both of those in our 60 day max vertical program. So um, I can give you guys a link here. I'll bring it up on the back end, but better at beach.com forward slash 60 day max vertical jump guys if you want a program that i guarantee increases your vertical leap it's gonna be right there i just put it in the chat i'm actually gonna send it to everybody just in case um but it's a 60 day max vertical it's a 60 day program you get access to our private facebook group you get to post all of your exercises when you post those exercises uh we get to critique them in the Facebook group and you also get a nutrition challenge along with it. Uh, and you get to do the workouts alongside me. 60 day max vertical program guarantee it'll help you. Uh, if you're asking about squats and deadlifts or you're worried about fitness or you just want to see your game upgrade, I built that program and it's my baby. So, uh, I hope you enjoy it. Go check it out. 60 day max vertical better at beach. Now, Going back to the top of the scroll. Guys, you guys are chatting. I appreciate all of you. There's a lot of people in here. Okay. Might need a producer at some point. Tanya, help me out. Is beach hitting similar to indoors? Yes and no. Uh, beach and indoors are, are pretty different. You just have to get used to the different surface. You have to get used to not swinging at a hundred percent no matter what the court's smaller you're not going to jump as high you have to learn how to spot the ball instead of just being viciously powerful uh there's a lot more options for players to have you will broad jump significantly less you'll still broad jump but you'll broad jump a lot less uh everything else is pretty much the same the same principles apply so we still run parallel along the right side and we come in at an angle along the left side uh and you'll see this beach game is changing. I promise you it's changing right now because we're starting to get rid of blockers. And what I mean by that is we're running combination, speed, offense, everything like that, that's going to absolutely kind of make blockers struggle. So blockers are now going to have to be a lot more versatile, move around the net a lot better. Uh, so beach is about to follow the same path that indoor followed, I guess, about 20 years ago. So it's an exciting time for beach volleyball. All right. Um, no, uh, sorry, Silva. I will not be coaching this weekend in Hermosa. Um, I will be this weekend. I'll be back in Salt Lake city and, uh, that's it. Hey, Joe Lambert hanging out streaming. Yeah, man. We're, we're figuring stuff out here. I only got 14% battery, but that's it. Uh, nice hanging Joe. What do you recommend for a five ten guy trying to jump higher? I'll tell you what I recommend straight off the bat is my max vertical jump program. That's it. You need to be on a program. You need to be consistent with it. And you need to be doing the right reps, period. If you're doing the wrong rep sets, too many reps, um, resting too short, you're not going to be training yourself for beach volleyball. So I already built the program for you. If you guys have any fitness 
questions. I guarantee that they are all answered in the 60 day max vertical program. Uh, I'll post it here one more time just in case you guys didn't get it, but that's the answer. It's the answer that I needed a while ago. I just built the program for myself. Um, and I know that you guys could use it and we filmed all of it. So you'll be working out alongside me. So if you're interested, go with it. <laughs> all right. Ray, when you handset, is your hand extended when meeting the ball? Your hands should your hands should be relaxed, not extended. So in general, beach sets should be caught lower. Caught lower, not brought lower. It's a big difference. Caught lower, not brought lower. You don't want the ball to come down with your elbows and hands. You want your hands to receive, then your elbows to go up. So your hands should not be extended and they shouldn't be tense. They should be relaxed, just a little relaxed tension there. Why can't coaches coach during play? I don't know, Brian. I don't know. I don't make the rules. Uh, they're starting to coach during NCAA, so they can. I think they can coach somewhat during the play. Um, but tennis has had that for a while, uh, where your coach is just uninvolved. I kind of like the idea of it. I mean, I love the idea of a coach, but I also like the idea of being your own warrior and figuring out your own battles. It's huge. Coaches are a lot more involved now, and they're going to continue to have more involvement, especially on the AVP. But to be able to fight your own battles and figure out how to win on your own, there's something to be said for that. And I think the increase in coaching will actually allow certain types of athletes to flourish more. So if you're not a cerebral athlete, you're just physical and you can do whatever you need to do physically, but you don't, you can't figure out what's happening to you, like what the other team has hit, where their weaknesses are then that coach on the sideline is now going to help you. So you don't need to pay attention. So that same guy who is like a mental warrior and a physical warrior um, from beginning of volleyball until now, now the people who don't have the mental side are going to be able to catch up because they're going to have that coach on them saying like, hey, look what's happening. You paying attention. Uh, make sure that you're covering this or hitting that shot or hey, you know, they're baiting you into this every time. Make sure you don't fall for it. So it's going to be interesting the what happens with coaches going forward. But it definitely opens up something for a different type of athlete. And somebody who wasn't as mental mentally engaged before, now they're going to have an advantage if they have a coach. Um, top spin spiking. Pablo, uh, I would recommend first and foremost our, again, we have a fix your arm swing in 21 days. So I'm going to include that link. Uh, but all of these questions guys are answered in our membership. Uh, this one's included in our membership. It's fix your arm swing in 21 days. It helps you hit harder, it helps you hit more pain free, and it helps fix some of your sequencing. So if you're trying to hit with topspin, I recommend hitting the top hemisphere of the ball. Okay. That has to be your impact. Some coaches will say, snap your wrist. The only thing that that really helps with is trying to keep your wrist loose, which is important for speed. And it helps you hit the top of the ball, which makes something spin forward. So if you're hitting the side or the bottom of the ball, it's not going to spin forward. You have to learn how to contact the top hemisphere of the ball with your hand in order to get top spin. Hope that helps. Okay. Hello from France. What's up, Nathan? Thanks for joining. Okay. Please, people give a like to this live video. Yeah, that would be nice. Thanks, Pablo. I don't know how likes work on live videos, but like I said, this is a first time experiment and uh, hopefully we can do that. Would be great if you could split screen and would love to see you and or Brandon do commentary on FIVB matches. I'm gonna try that next time, Tanya, see what happens, but uh, more so I'd like to use this time right now to maybe just converse with everybody, kind of answer direct questions. Uh, I like the idea of that. Uh, Gunnars, will what work at 40 plus? Interesting question. Links aren't posting here at all. Well, I don't know how to do that. It says can't post to some channels. Either way, uh, Chantel, the, what you want to look for is betteratbeach.com forward slash 60 day max vertical. That's the vertical program, betteratbeach.com forward slash store. That's where you would find our membership, which includes all of the courses. All right. There are some questions from Facebook. Not sure if you can see them. I could copy and paste them. 
Who do I think will win in Sochi this weekend? I think it would be interesting to see Try and Trevor win uh, and put a little like last minute pressure on that Olympic race. So that would be pretty cool. As far as who do you think is going to win? I mean, everybody's safe bet has to be the same, right? Like Norway is just unbelievable right now. Okay. Dream partner of all time. I'm not going to lie to you. I would have a lot of fun playing with Mike Dodd. Uh, he's, he's not massive, but uh, when he was coaching me and I got to work with him, I just loved being on a court, being around him. Mike Dodd is one of the funniest people you'll ever meet. Uh, and I enjoy somebody who can keep me kind of lighthearted uh, on the court. So uh, Mike Dodd would be sweet. Uh, what else do we got? All right, Patrick's, Patrick's Orups. Greetings from Latvia. Another friend from Latvia. Guys, this is cool that you're uh, hanging out with us. Uh, I play beach and have trouble making my wrist snappy and finishing my swing with my palm. Any recommendations? Recommendation, again, has got to be fix your arm swing in 21 days. Better at beach.com forward slash store. It's going to help you stay loose. It's going to take you through exercises that make sure that you stay loose and you don't stiffen up. Usually, if you're having trouble snapping, it's because you're focusing on your hand. Instead of swinging through the ball, let your hand be completely limp, right? See the ball, if, you're if the ball's here, you want to hit this side of it. So go through the ball, but don't worry about like opening your hand or tightening your hand. All of that focus, the mental focus on your hand is going to make you be stiff. It's going to make you be slow and you won't be able to snap. So you have to let your hand go numb and snap through it, okay? You have to be able to do this. Uh, is hitting the same in indoors? We already answered that, Yoli. Uh, check the recording of the live stream. Simeon, best tip for not getting too early to the net when attacking. Yes, my best tip is walk on your right step. Walk on the first step of your approach during set contact. Then do not make your forward movement or any fast movement towards the net. Do not attach that to your setter's contact. So take that walking step. And we actually have this video coming up, which uh, you'll see on Monday, actually. So who is this, Simeon? On Monday, we're releasing exactly this video, how not to be early and how not to jog. So just stay tuned. Make sure you click the little bell on our YouTube thing to make sure you get notified. Or you head to betterbeach.com and sign up for our email uh, newsletter. Okay. Is being goofy footed when attacking, do you think you should fix it? It's not completely 100% necessary to fix when you're goofy footed. Um, there are a couple of advantages and disadvantages depending on which side of your body the set lands on. Uh, it's difficult to be goofy footed when you're an indoor player. It's more difficult and there are power, it compromises power sometimes. So you just gotta make sure that you have the upper body strength to overcome that. Guys, I. This has been cool hanging out with you, uh, getting to chat with you. I have to go. My battery's running. It's about 5%. I didn't slate too much time, but it's, I'm like, I'm stoked to know that this works. So thank you for hanging out. If you guys have any questions, make sure you head to Volley Chat on Facebook. Uh, if you want to get in, uh, in some of our online courses or if you want to be on our email list, go to betteratbeach.com. And I'll just include the link to our membership right away. And if you're in the membership, you get to meet with me and we talk live. You'll be in a live video and you get to post your own videos into our private Facebook group. And that is when we'll go over your specific technique. So you can show me videos of your technique, uh, your game, and we go over it during those weekly meetings in the Elite Performers Tribe. So I hope you join that. Uh, thank you for randomly hanging out with me. I'll see you later. Make sure you sign up for that uh, that newsletter as well. Go to betteratbeach.com. Get yourself a free drill book. Free drill book. Why not? There's no point in not doing it. All right. Guys, have a great day. Volley on. Later.